welcome back to Mog's Workshop. So we need some controls for our tiny flight simulator. Let's start with this old controller here from an Xbox. Not really an official controller, but we won't dwell on that. How do we get this little fellow open? I can't figure it out. I was sticking this thing in here and wiggling and waggling in it, and I couldn't get it open. What on earth was causing the problem? I really struggled with this until I realized that under here, under this sticker, was another screw. Why do they do this? Anyway, undo the screw and we're inside. And what do we see when we're inside? Well, we see all kinds of nonsense that we don't need. That doesn't look particularly well made, does it? Anyway, here we go. We've got some vibration motors here and all kinds of other complicated stuff. But what we want are these sticks here, and perhaps even these buttons for the rudders. Hmm, but how are we going to separate all of this? It's all stuck together on a single circuit board. I think that'll be a complete nightmare. Let's make our own. Yes, let's bash out an Arduino micro. Let's get these chunky little sticks and we'll hook it all up and we'll make our own. Let's see now. Yes, this seems to be doing the throttle with a little bit of programming. Oh yes, forwards and backwards, that works. Wonderful stuff. What else have we got here? Yes, we've got the control column, the joystick here, moving backwards and forwards and left and right. And wonderfully, with inside of the DCS software, we've also got the capability to fiddle with things. Yes, because we're going to need to do that. We're going to need to optimize our sticks because of the sensitivity and whatnots. So, with a little bit of fiddling and fettling, though, no problem. Look, we've got the rudders working, the plane's wibbling all over the place there, but don't worry about that. We need to get back to this. This is our tub, our little cockpit here, and these are our joysticks. We need to take their hats off, because otherwise they're far too chunky. And we need to find a place to stick them. Now, this one here, that's going to be for the main joystick, the main control column. This one here is going to be for the throttle, and then we've got two to hide back there somehow to be the rudders. How are these all going to fit? They're pretty big, so we need to figure out some kind of neat system here to get them in place. But I think we can do that. Come on, let's see what we can do together. Let's go. First things first, let's widen up these apertures on the throttle and on the joystick so they've got more waggle room to play with. And we also need to elongate these sticks because they're going to be underneath. Yes, we're going to hide all of these control mechanisms deep within the bowels of our cockpit. And for that, we're going to use some pins and a piece of styrene tubing. Should work. Let's find out. Back to the cockpit, and we've cut a couple of other holes. What are these ones for? Well, that's our little face there, and here are his eyebrows. What's that? Well, these are the rudder pedals. Of course, ultimately, they need to move independently, but we'll fix that later. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to flip him upside down, made a couple of little tree stumps here, and these are going to hold our thing above the other thing. What I mean by that is, it's going to hold the cockpit above the base that we're going to stick it on. And if that doesn't make any sense, don't worry, it should all hopefully become clear. Anyway, let's try gluing these little guys in place with some super glue and what we'll do is we'll put some reinforcements either side so they're a little bit more sturdy these should keep our cockpit raised above all the electronics double check the heights here we go we've got the base ready and marked out and we've created some little inner stumps for our outer stumps these little chaps will get held in place with some tack and then we're going to put it on top of our base with a little bit of plastic weld this effectively melts the plastic to each other. It's a little bit smelly, so make sure you wear a face mask. It's not very nice to get on your skin either, although it does evaporate very fast. It does leave a very strange cold feeling that I wouldn't recommend. Okay, placing it in place, double tap, here it is. It's going to be very nicely set before you can say bing bang bong. Is it set already? Not quite. A little bit longer, and it's it's ready look at this okay that didn't take long did it now pulling up on this the tack is really holding on tightly so gradually as we go because it is a strong bond but not a crazily strong bond that plastic to plastic because the surface area is very small so we'll tease this up here making sure not to make any sudden movements and break everything and before you know it it's coming away coming away and we have left our pegs in the perfect registration now we need to secure them and we've just put in a nice little bit of reinforcement in between those. Now they're solid, not going anywhere. Look at this, it fits lovely. All of our sticks in place with our little extending pins. I think this will be just the ticket. 
So, time to secure it in place. More tack here, holding it while we drill holes and then get the screws ready. Only temporarily, because we're going to paint it first, but just make sure it fits. Does it all fit? Yes, there you go. The Arduino's in place as well, and so's our little power rails. What are the power rails for? Well, let's have a look. Here's the entire thing now put together, and we can see on the other side there's an enormous circuit board that's going to hold our power rails. In other words, extending our positive and our negative from our Arduinos and from our Adafruit trinkets, so we don't have to keep using the same pin all of the time. That would have led to some very, very ugly soldering. We don't want that. What have we got here? Well, we've got a big, fat, blunt needle, and I decided that this is going to be a much better solution than the pins, because I discovered it's got the same diameter. Yes, when we use these instead of the pins, there's no bendiness. These are super solid. We'll just trim them to the right height, and this is going to be a very happy solution. What's this? This is also a happy solution. We have created a little axle for our rudder pedals. So now when we push on the left, it goes left, and push on the right, it'll go right, rather than them both moving at the same time, which is all kinds of confusing. Yeah, and we don't want that, do we? No, not when we want to find out whether the joystick actually fits, and it does, and the throttle actually fits. Oh, it does as well. That's rather good. Now, what about these little rudders here? Let's see them in action. Okay, we're going to push down on one here. Okay, that works, and the other one didn't move, and we'll push down on this one, and look at that, it's moving the little joystick underneath. Okay, this is going to work. I think, I hope, anyway. Moving on, what we've had to do here is extend the tub. Yes, our little case is not going to be big enough to hold the screens in place unless we extend it by ooh, whatever that is a couple of inches we're holding it in place here with a couple of clamps and we're using a combination of super glue and plastic weld yeah, and here's a couple of other things. We've got some brackets that we've put together here and added to the cockpit in order to hold in place our wondrous wonder screen. Now this little chap does get jolly hot, so what we've also got is a little bracket at the back to hold a fan to stop it melting. Both the back of the screen and its little circuit board do get rather toasty. And as it's not a real plane made of real metal, it will really melt because it's made of plastic which is really, really quite soft and doesn't like heat in any way, shape or form. So without these, the danger is we'd end up with a sort of aviation-themed puddle. And we don't want that, we want a fully working tiny simulator. So let's put these in place. We've sprung the plastic here so it should hold it nice and firm. Let's try, here we go. Clip. There we are. That could be taken out at any time. We're going to need to do that soon, in fact, to paint the thing. But it's now in place. It should keep the screen nice and cool. Hello, look at you there. And we can see it from the front there. Not obtrusive at all, just blowing nice cool air. Wonderful, wonderful. At the back here, we've created another sort of bracket here to hold another fan for the circuit board. And we're going to clip this in place. Once again, we can remove that at any time. And on the sides of the cockpit, our little tub there, we've created a couple of rails just to hold it right in the right place, right above all of the little chips which are doing fancy stuff on the circuit board and get very hot as a result. Yeah, and in order to finish it off and make it look nice, we'll take a little piece of mesh and put that in place. Nifty. Heat isn't always our enemy. Here we can use it via this fancy gun and create a curved screen. But wait a minute, this screen looks awful. It's a kind of lumpy mess. That's not good. We need a mold. Yes, we're going to take this and we're going to use a pot from the kitchen. Yes, this is perfect. What we're going to do is take this to the side of this pot and then blast it with heat. This should hold it in shape rather than trying to do it freehand, in which case it can get all wibbly and wobbly. Let's have a look, shall we? Here's the old one. Look at that. That's not very good, is it? What's the new one look like? Oh, that's much better, a much more concise and consistent curve, and that should do the job nicely for our little screen. But before it can hold said screen, we need to reinforce it with some brackets to make sure it doesn't spring back over time and to really hold it in place. Also, what's going to need to happen is that it's going to have to slot in here, again, more little guide rails to hold it in place, but at the back side, it's going to need some kind of little platform to hold its own circuit board. Because because it really is quite a big circuit board and we don't want it to interfere with anything else. So, hmm, need to figure out a space just above here for the fan for the other one. Let's have a look, shall we? Talking of the other one, I did a quick test fit and realized I needed to add a couple of extra brackets just to keep that gold ribbon from interfering in the view. Don't want that. Okay, what did we come up with? Well, what I've done here is I've added a 45 degree slope again on a little bit of suspended plastic there. So it's all a little bit bouncy, nothing too rigid, and it's already 
ready for painting. Look at all this pencil scribbled nonsense that we need to make look lovely and uniform with nice coats of primer. So let's give that a go, shall we? Oh, that's much nicer. Look how neat that looks. Ready for painting, I think. Let's go. Yeah, we'll save the bulk of the painting for next episode, but what we'll do now is we'll bang on some shade, because that always helps bring out all of the little nice bits, and we'll do the opposite effect with some dry painting over the top of some silver, just to bring out all the highlights. And there you go, that enables us to have a little bit of a starting point ready for the next time, because what we need to do now is affix the display to our screen green stand. Yes, we can't put it off any longer. Let's put it together. So how are we going to do that? We're going to use nano tape. This stuff is amazing. It's basically like hot glue that isn't hot at all. It's very malleable and incredibly sticky. It's double-sided. It'll hold anything to anything else. I think I could glue myself to the ceiling with it. Nevertheless, the screen is quite precious. Let's listen in to my level of confidence. This is scary. Oh dear, yes it was scary because you don't want to break this, this is a very delicate piece of kit. But we'll push it on nice and gently and once it's stuck it has really stuck. My word, it's in place, I can't believe it, it's there. So, popping around the back, we can see the little tab here that's going to connect to the circuit board, so let's put all that in place, shall we? Big one goes there, little one goes at the top. Let's put the big one in first. Turn him around. Big one is screwed in, little one is kind of floating. How to secure him? Well, we're going to use a little bit more nano tape. We'll just put a couple of little blobs here and there and it holds it in nice and solid. This is all going terribly well, isn't it? Let's turn it around and have a look at our lovely curved OLED screen and reveal it. It's always fun to remove this plastic protective material. Ah, wondrous, wondrous. It's done! Excellent stuff! What could possibly go wrong? Oh dear, something did go wrong. What went wrong though? Let's have a look, shall we? Post-mortem time. The screen is connected via these two circuit boards to this business. Now this particular display is kind of like a thick weird bag of business. It's an OLED screen, it is flexible, but it's not particularly thin, and these connections are now inside all of this horrible nano tape, which I now don't like. Anyway, what I think happened is, well, this screen kind of wants to be flat even though it can bend. It's on a curved surface and it's kind of pulling itself away like this, and these little thread connections, well, they popped off as a result, and oh dear, it didn't work. Hmm, going to need to think about this one. What to do, what to do. Oh dear, see you next time!